Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Shakira Peer. Coming up, Ministry of Sports to construct two tennis courts, HFLE teachers better equipped for the classroom, an outgoing chairman, Simeon Albert, bids farewell, and new councillors sworn in Canefield Urban Council. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Children, yell and tell if someone tries to abuse you. Tell until someone believes you and they do something about it. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlboro Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Thanks for staying with us. The Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, has given the Ministry of Sports the green light for the construction of two tennis courts. The Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance revealed this information at a handing over ceremony of a $50,000 check to the Goodwill Sports Development Committee. I have also given the Ministry of Sports the go-ahead for the construction of um, two tennis courts um, in the in Portsmouth and also two tennis courts in uh, the Roseau area and they have identified lands at Canefield that those lands have to be cleared so I will make the money available for those courts and those courts must be properly lit uh, with appropriate washroom facilities. The Honorable Finance Minister also informed that the go-ahead has been given to complete the designs for the National Indoor Sports Facility in Stock Farm. The $5 million National Indoor Sports Facility is funded by the Government of Mexico and construction is expected to begin in 2017. I've also given them the go-ahead to uh, uh, complete the designs for the indoor sports facility at um, Stock Farm. The intention of the indoor sports facility is to ensure that we can commence construction in 2017. I have been able to identify the monies for it and it's a matter for the ministry to do the necessary appropriate um, preparations because we believe that it's an important facility uh, for sportsmen and the country as a whole and also for the possibility of us being able to host regional um, tournaments. In the 2016-2017 budget address, the Honorable Prime Minister stated that financial allocations were made for the covering of the hard court in Massac. This will go for the hosting of games despite inclement weather. In the budget, you would have seen funds allocated for the improvements to the Massac hard court, the covering, and also the retrofitting of the Massac hard court. And the Ministry of Sports, along with Mr. Public Works, are working on on the details of that. I'm hoping that very soon we can see commencement of work on issues of contract. Lighting will soon be made available for five playing fields across the country. Government continues to invest in the talents of the youth for their physical and mental well-being. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt is leading a delegation to Haiti and the Bahamas, the two Caribbean community countries severely affected by the passage of Hurricane Matthew last week. Skerritt, who is chairman of CARICOM, is accompanied by CARICOM Secretary General Owen Larock, the executive director of the Barbados-based Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDEMA, as well as government advisor on disaster management, Cecil Schillingford. The Dominica leader arrived in Haiti on Tuesday, where he was briefed by CIDEMA's Ronald Jackson. Prime Minister Skerritt also spoke with the Haitian press, where he stressed the need for long-term projects to lessen the impact of future natural disasters in Haiti. Hurricane Matthew has been blamed for the deaths of nearly 900 people in Haiti and thousands have been left homeless. The Dominica leader noted the impact of the, of the disaster on water systems, agriculture and infrastructure and health. He was especially concerned about the impact on the children of Haiti. He believes efforts should be made to repair schools and assistance should be provided to activate the school feeding program. 
GIS News will continue to follow this story and will bring you more in further newscasts. In other news, each year and as often as needed, the Ministry of Education provides training to teachers in all subject areas, including Health and Family Life Education, HFLE. On Tuesday, October 11th, the Ministry held an HFLE workshop for teachers touching on some of the major thematic areas of HFLE aimed at increasing the versatility and proficiency of teachers within the classroom. Education Officer and Coordinator of the HFLE program, Rena John Charles, addressed the event. This workshop is primarily for new teachers entering the service and for teachers who need to increase their knowledge and strengthen their skills in HFLE. The Ministry of Education recognizes the importance of promoting the right values, attitudes, and skills in our children to foster, foster sorry, a more holistic de um, de development. HFLE is one of the vehicles used to achieve this goal. She explained the importance of HFLE. Children are faced with many challenges as they grow. HFLE embodies life skills like refusal skills, problem solving, decision making, negotiation, empathy, effective communication, coping with stress, emotions, and many other life skills and psychosocial competencies that help children and youth make the right choices when, they, when um, these challenges are encountered. Although a core subject within Dominica's curriculum offered to all students, the subject is rarely tested in the traditional way. John Charles noted that HFLE is student-centered, and so students are given opportunities to participate throughout the lesson and are empowered in the classroom. They are taught to believe in themselves and the importance of taking responsibility for their own health. The life skills they learn help them stay, help them say no to bullying, drug and alcohol abuse, unhealthy eating, unhealthy lifestyles, violence, and acting out behaviors, just to name a few. The ministry also recognizes the need for teacher preparation. Teachers must come into the classroom well equipped with confidence, understanding of, of the subject four strands, knowledge of content, methods of lesson delivery, lesson planning, and assessment strategies. Additionally, teachers need to acquire skills to engage students in order to bring out the cognitive and affective component of the subject. Assistant Chief Education Officer Dr. Jeffrey Blaise, in his address, stated that the importance of HFLE should not be downplayed. We recognize that in addition to developing students' cognitive competencies, the academic potential must develop the effective do domain, that is the social skills, the ability to cope with life's stress. Because there will be stress in life. Stress there will be, I'm sure. And everybody will have their degree of anxiety and stress at, at one point or another in their lives. And therefore, we must prepare students for that. And we must prepare adults for that as well. Dr. Blaise is particularly pleased that the facilitators of the workshop have been previously trained in the subject area, which is a clear sign of sustainability. It says something positive about sustenance of the program, that our trainees over the past years, our teachers, our competent teachers at our schools, are now the ones who are here facilitating the sessions for our teachers. And that is important. That peer intervention is critical because what it does is build capacity, build human resource capacity. So no longer are we expected to recruit consultants from out of state to do sessions for us in those areas. We can do it ourselves and that says something not only for managing our budget in terms of the expenditure on those, those areas but also for building our capacity as professionals. Very important. You deserve a round of applause for that. The Assistant Chief Education Officer had this message to the participating teachers. You have both a proactive and a reactive role. Your proactive role involves 
putting in place measures and developing strategies and competencies for students to cope within the classroom and out of the classroom. And that includes areas such as developing self-esteem in students. Student self-confidence is very, very important. Not yielding to peer pressure, that is one of the biggest challenges that we have within society, particularly for our young adults, the issue of peer pressure. Everybody wants to be a follower. You have to train students to be leaders, to lead their group, so that they can lead in positive ways. We are strategically positioned to address some of those issues, at least within the school system and in society where we can. If we train our students appropriately to be leaders, they will then go out into the community and at least one child will influence an adult. The Dominica Police Force is seeking the cooperation and support of the public in order to efficiently execute their task to keep patrons safe during the 13th annual Floor Creole in the Park, which is anticipated to draw a huge crowd. The official launching ceremony of the event, scheduled for October 24th to 27th, was held on Thursday, 6 October at the Fort Young Hotel. Dominica Police Force Operations Officer, ASP Richmond Valentine, who addressed the ceremony on behalf of Chief of Police Daniel Carbon, revealed the plans of the police for the Creole in the Park. He stated that the operational plan will be tailored with the emphasis on venue security, traffic management, patrons within the city and environs, among others, security considerations. All entries and exit points at the venue were remanded by police and assisted by other additional security measures. Persons entering the venue will be subjected to screening and any violation of the laws of the Commonwealth of Dominica, the appropriate action will be taken and they will be dealt with according to law. With regard to traffic management. To ensure safety of patrons and to ease traffic congestion in the city, traffic signs were placed at various locations and in some cases, police officers will be positioned to man various points. I am appealing to the general public and motorists in particular to comply with the traffic arrangements expected to be in place for the duration of the event. ASP Valentine also revealed that consistent patrol will be maintained throughout the city during these activities. To the vendors who are planning to do business on those days, remember that for the duration of the event, certain areas in close proximity to the venue will be deemed no vending zones and you will be expected to abide by those rules. The police operations officer solicits the support of all stakeholders during the event to ensure an incident-free 13th edition of the Flow Creole in the Park. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Let's have some fun, eh? I'm not ready for your kind of fun yet. But everybody else is doing it. But I'm not everybody else. I'm me, and I want to do well in school. Well, you definitely get an A for attitude. I plan to get an A in life, and then I think of your kind of fun. So what am I to do in the meantime? You'll survive. Say no when you're not ready. Use condoms when you are. Welcome back. After 15 years as chairman of the Canefield Urban Council, Simeon Albert on Friday passed the baton to Maxime Powell at the ninth inaugural meeting of the council. The inauguration ceremony held at the Old Mill Cultural Center welcomed His Excellency President of Dominica Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, Honorable Minister for Trade, Energy and Employment, representing the Honorable Prime Minister Ian Douglas, Honorable Minister for Social Services Lady Catherine Daniel, other cabinet ministers and community members. Five elected councillors, Maxime Powell, Michael Coppel, Michael Timothy, 
Joyce Dupy, and Ingrid Abraham, along with three nominated Alan Wilson, Franklin Fabian, and Veronica Graham, took their oaths at the ceremony. Honorable Ian Douglas, representing the Honorable Prime Minister, urged the new councillors to keep nation building foremost in their minds and actions throughout their term. To the councillors who have been in sworn in here today, I congratulate you for taking this bold step to be in the forefront of the development of your community. And I urge you to take this position seriously. Work closely and support your chairman and collaborate with your parliamentary representatives on plans you wish to implement within the community because you are part of the governance structure at the grassroots level. You interface with the masses in a very direct way. The work of the council can make or break the reputation of any community. Your plans and programs can either make or break the reputation and popularity of your community. Honorable Douglas recognized the outgoing Chairman Simeon Albert for his 15 years of service to the Kenfield Urban Council. He extended the gratitude of the government of Dominica for his outstanding service to the people of the Kenfield community. Honorable Minister for Social Services, Lady Catherine Daniel, had these words of guidance for the new councillors, most of whom are new to the council. I charge you to make your commitment a strong and solid one so that you will not be deterred or distracted by petty issues or the lack of harmony that seems to plague some councils nowadays. Be focused on achieving your objectives, not only during the season of independence, but into the three years which constitutes your term of office. For whether you continue to serve on council or not, your commitment to nation building should still stand. Honorable Daniel also offered thanks to the outgoing chairman and council for their service and the implementation of several projects. Outgoing chairman Simeon Albert gave his farewell speech at the ceremony. He urged the councillors to refrain from negativity. I wish to congratulate the elected members of the council and to also congratulate the nominated members of the council and to say to you that your task has just begun. Mine's has come to an end. And as you go about carrying out your duties, I pray that God will guide and protect each and every one of you. As I bid farewell to the council, I will continue to be a resident of Kenfield, and I will continue to use my influence wherever necessary to ensure that I can help this community. I pray that God will bless us as residents and continue to guide and protect us all, and that we all shall pay our taxes, as this is important for the function of the council. During his 15 years of service, Simeon Albert spearheaded several road rehabilitation projects, facilitation of electricity, water and land ownership at Benaravin, a river defense wall at Kinfield Housing Scheme with the assistance of government, streetlights, basketball courts with bleachers, renovation of the council office to include the post office and a fully computerized council office. Incoming chairman Maxime Powell thanked the residents of Kinfield for putting their confidence in the councillors who have committed themselves to manage the affairs of Kinfield. He shared his plans for the community. We need your efforts in keeping our community clean to create that healthy ambience everyone yearns for. As Kenfield continues to expand, we notice that solid waste is becoming a serious, a serious issue, sorry, which we need to address as soon as possible. And in this regard, we will be engaging the Solid Waste Management Corporation to discuss some of the ways that we can manage and dispose of our waste. We may have to come we may have to consider sorry, composting as well. We see the need for one or two tipper trucks for waste disposal purposes. Community expansion also means that our population is growing very rapidly. So too are the needs of the community. We are also surrounded by many hazards and threats, which include the gas stations 
the rivers and ravines, the airports, and the busy road activities. Some areas in Canfield are very vulnerable, like Yonder, Big Old, River Estate along the river, the Royal Bam Housing Scheme, West Side, Canfield Flat, and Chekhol. While we have been spared so far by the negative weather systems this year, the scars of Tropical Storm America will forever be in our minds, as well as Tropical Storm Ophelia of 2009. The impact of climate change is very glaring, and, and even development on a whole is also taking its toll on the environment. Therefore, we will be, refu we will be, sorry, we will be reviewing our state of preparedness for emergency situations and put in place the necessary mechanism to help mitigate the effects of threatening hazards. So we will need some of you to serve on various committees as well as be, as well as be involved in community emergency response. Other activities we hope to undertake will include the revival of Canefest, the upgrading of the Eddy Tula Park, just to name a few. Paul will reveal that the council will be inviting the community to meetings to get suggestions and address concerns. Meanwhile, Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Mahu constituency, Raven Blackmore, congratulated the new council and also used the opportunity to salute the outgoing chairman. I'm elated and delighted having heard the incoming chairman on the commitment for everybody to work together. Let me give you the assurance that I will continue to work in the field, but I want us, notwithstanding our political persuasions, to really recognize the effort of Mr. Simeon Albert, because 15 years service to any organization is significant. Diana Prosper, who is from the village of Dublin, is Dominica's 27th centenarian. On Saturday, Prosper began her birthday celebrations with a mass at the Miraculous Infant Jesus Chapel in Dublin. The mass was followed by a reception where family, friends and villagers gathered to reminisce on the centenarian's life. Many testified the impact she had on their lives by using her gift, the gift of dreams. It was stated that Prosper was blessed by God to have dreams that would direct villagers on the right path, and this the villagers are thankful for. His Excellency the President of Dominica, Charles Savre, congratulated the centenarian for reaching this milestone. On behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and on behalf of Mrs. Savre and myself, I wish to extend to you my congratulations and good wishes on the occasion of the celebration of your 100th birthday on Saturday, the 8th of October, 2016. May the good Lord continue to bless you. Honorable Minister for Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs, Lady Catherine Daniel, who is also Parliamentary Representative for the Collier constituency, which includes Dubla, had these words for the centenarian. When you reach that age, it is through caring, love. When you give to your community, the community gives back to you. And as Thora said, she was a dreamer, not a dreamer, but someone who dreamt about things for people. And this is a sign that you are in God's plan. She expressed pride in the community spirit of caring for each other. I am very excited to see Dublin as a community which always comes together to take care of its old people. We talk about the Yes We Care program, but Dublin is not part of that because they like to take care of the elderly. In, in Dublin, if one person is sick at the hospital, that's a community that will organize, not looking for any money for anybody to pay a bus for them to go and visit their people at the hospital. They are 
always there for you. She urged the young people of the community to emulate that behavior. President of the Dominica Council on Aging, Zet Matuse, also addressed the gathering. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the board of directors, the staff, and the members of the Dominica Council on Aging to say a big congratulations to Mrs. Diana Prosper on achieving this great milestone. Not many of us will reach that 100. Dominica's newest centenarian received gift baskets from His Excellency Charles Savre, the Minister for Social Services, Lady Catherine Daniel, and the Dominica Council on Aging. That's the English news. Your tip of the day is next. There is a silent, invisible killer in our midst, a killer which largely goes unnoticed as it plies its deadly trade. Its name is secondhand tobacco smoke, which has a far greater impact on persons inhaling this poison than on smokers themselves. Secondhand tobacco smoke is especially detrimental in public places and negatively impacts our national health as well as public health expenditure. Stop this invisible killer now. Say no to secondhand tobacco smoke in public places. A public health message brought to you by the Ministry of Health and the Pan American Health Organization. Here are some of the reasons why young people should participate in sporting activities. By participating in sports, the young athletes will develop and become proficient at the various sports skills, develop skills needed to socialize with their peers as well as adults, develop independence and confidence, develop a sense of achievement which helps develop a positive self-image, and they will develop leadership skills and qualities. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I'm Shakira Peer. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.